everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're just about to get started. Thank you all for joining us today for this information session on our Summer Abroad Greece virtual program. We're happy to have you here with us to learn more about Summer Abroad and about the Greece program. My name is Jennifer Ben. I work at the Summer Abroad office at U of T and I'm the program coordinator for the, the Greece program. Before we continue, although we're not all together in the same space physically, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. So here's our agenda for today's session. Uh, I'll start with some introductions to let you know who else is on this webinar and who you'll be hearing from today. I'll then provide you with a general overview of what Summer Abroad is, and then we'll just dive right into the details of the Virtual Greece program for 2021. And this is where I'll invite the instructor to share more about the course. And we're also going to hear from a past student participant where she'll share uh, her experience about taking the course. And then I'll cover some information about how to apply, the cost, and the next step. So I'm aiming for the formal presentation part to take about 30 minutes to 40 minutes or so, uh, which will leave us with lots of time to answer any questions you have. So you'll notice on your screen, there's a Q&A button that you can click and type in your questions to submit to us. And you're welcome to submit your questions at any point during the session. And we'll answer them either during the session or at the end of the formal presentation. One thing I should note before we go on is just about our Zoom webinar setup today. So it may look a little different to other Zoom meetings that you've been in. For participants attending, your camera and microphone will remain off and the chat function to be able to chat with other participants is disabled today. So you'll mainly be sitting back, relaxing, watching our presentation. And really the best way to engage with us if you have any questions is to submit them through the Q&A function. Also, this session is being recorded, so we'll be sure to send you a link to access the video in case you want to refer back to any of the information we shared today. Okay, so we'll begin with some introductions. So in addition to myself, I also have my colleague Wendy with me. Wendy is working behind the scenes, making sure everything is running smoothly, and she'll also be helping us answer questions through the Q&A function. As well, I'm very grateful to have our instructor, Dr. Themis Aravastas, with us today. Themis will be speaking more about the specifics of this course a little later, and you'll be invited to ask any questions you have about the course. And I'm also happy to have our student speaker, Abby, with us today. Abby participated in the Greece program in 2019, so we'll hear from her about her insights um, as a student from her student experience. Okay, so let's get started with, we'll start with what is Summer Abroad? So Summer Abroad, we offer courses that are U of T courses, and they take place during the summer months, and they run between three to six weeks. So students who complete a summer abroad course, they earn a full year Y credit. So they're considered immersive condensed courses since a full year course normally takes about four months to complete during the summer term. These courses are condensed into three to six weeks. The class sizes are small, so they range between 18 to 30 students, and that gives you an opportunity to really get to know your classmates and your instructor. Because summer abroad courses are U of T courses, they'll show up on your transcript just like any other U of T course you take. So lots of students take summer abroad courses to fulfill their program requirements, as well as any breadth and distribution requirements they need for graduation. These courses, they're taught by U of T faculty, and in some cases by international faculty at our partner institutions. And again, because of the small class size, you have the opportunity to work closely with your professor and your colleagues in class. For summer abroad courses, they're unique in that they're designed to include experiences like virtual field trips and guest speakers that connect you with the course content. So you're really experiencing what you're learning. And this also allows you to connect with the local experts and speakers abroad to gain that international perspective of your course content that you're learning. So as you may know, this year, because of the ongoing pandemic, we're unfortunately not able to offer our summer abroad courses like how we used to in the past with the travel component. Instead, we've modified our course offerings to become virtual courses this year. You may be wondering why you should take a virtual course. Well, there are certainly some benefits to taking a summer abroad virtual course. Certainly in terms of cost, it's not as expensive since there's no travel involved. You don't need to worry about paying for any travel and living arrangements. And it gives you the flexibility to take the course wherever you'd like. Compared to other U of T virtual courses, the virtual summer abroad courses are unique in that you have the opportunity to connect with guest speakers and local experts, which will really help build your network as you're connecting with people abroad. And it's also a chance to get to know more about these international destinations from the comfort of your own home. You'll get to learn more about the 
culture, you'll get to interact with the locals, and that really helps prepare you or even get you excited about wanting to travel there one day when it's safe to do so again. Maybe you're considering graduate studies abroad. This could be an opportunity to get to know the destination, whether it's a good fit for your education, things like that. And because again, the class sizes are small, you really get to know your classmates really well. So a lot of students in the past have told us they've made lifelong friends during their summer abroad experience. Uh, they got to work closely and collaborate together closely, which has really helped improve their communication and presentation skills. So again, the summer abroad courses are structured differently compared to other virtual courses at U of T. For the Greece program in particular, it's a full year course that's condensed into four weeks. So it is quite immersive. The classes will be taking place four days a week from Monday to Thursday. And this allows you to focus on only one course and really dive deep into the course content. Because of this, uh, we don't recommend you take other courses at the same time, just because you'll, you'll need to be present during your summer abroad course. Attendance for all online lectures and the virtual activities that are arranged are mandatory. So that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about summer abroad in terms of taking the courses for the summer. Also, you'll need to make sure you have your computer with a webcam and microphone, as well as reliable internet access so that you're able to fully participate in the course and really get the most out of the course. So again, our virtual summer abroad courses, they're taught by U of T faculty as well as international faculty at our partner institutions. And typically the faculty who teach these courses, they have a particular research interest in the location they're teaching about. I know for Themis, for the Greece course, he's very enthusiastic about Athens and Greece because he is from there. And he's always very excited to share more with the students about Greece. For this particular class, I know Themis has arranged many guest speakers and local experts as part of the course content. And you'll hear more about the course from Themis in just a moment. In terms of who is eligible to take these virtual abroad summer courses, these courses are open to U of T students across all three campuses. And it's also open to U of T alumni as well. You must be in good academic standing and you must have completed at least one term of study at the time of applying to be eligible. So if you're a first year student who completed a term last year, then you're eligible to apply. You must also have a CGPA of at least 1.75. For those first years who may not have a CGPA just yet, we will be assessing your application based on the grades you received from last term. And also these courses, they're also open to students from um, outside of Canadian universities. However, we do give preference to U of T students, but it is an option for anyone outside of U of T. So if you have a friend from another university who wants to take a summer abroad course with you, they can certainly do so. So if we have any students with us today who are from a different university, just to note, in addition to completing an application, you'll also need to submit a copy of your academic transcript so that we can assess your application. And we also need a letter of permission from your home university. Overall, the process is straightforward for students outside of U of T, but I do recommend you get in touch with us by email so we can walk you through the steps and ask their, answer any questions that you do have. And we'll go over more details about how to apply in general in just, in just a moment. For now, I'll just take a quick pause and see if there are any questions that I can answer at this time. One question here, would you happen to know the timing of when the course is running this summer? So this particular course will be running in between May and June, and we'll, I'll go through the dates in just a moment. Okay, that's all for now in terms of questions. So here's a quick overview of our Greece virtual program. So here are the dates. The course dates will run from May 10th to June 3rd, so that will be four weeks in the summer, and we're offering one political science course in this program. At this time, I would like to welcome Themis to join us and share more about this course and about the Greece program. Themis, when you're ready, the floor is yours. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jennifer, for the great introduction and the great things you shared with us regarding the program. I teach the modern Greek language and culture here at the, the University of Toronto at the Manx School of Global Affairs and Public Policy, particularly interested in the language and how the language is taught in Canada and my research uh, mainly has to do with the preservation of uh, Greek and also other heritage languages, languages of immigrant groups across Canada and North America. For this course, um, I had the opportunity to teach it once in Greece. One of the students who was part of this class will share with you later, Abby, share with you later her experiences. And then because of COVID, we couldn't organize uh, another class in Greece, but uh, we worked really hard into 
designing a course where you could still get a very good idea about what Greece is today, about contemporary Greece, and the four main aspects of this course, the people, tradition, language, and cuisine. And all has to do a little bit with politics. I try to explain not what Greece used to be, but what Greece is today. And for that, we will be really happy to have uh, colleagues and friends in Greece, professionals, um, academic and uh, friends who are experts in areas that are, you know, that are important for this course. And so we will, every day we will have in this class, we will have a live connection, Greece and a guest speaker or a virtual tour. So even virtually the course starting May 10th until June 3rd will take you every day to Greece because a speaker will always be there or something will be there live from Greece. Now, Jennifer earlier mentioned that it is important to participate in the course, but I understand that uh, some of you might be in different time zones. So classes will start at 11 until and three hour classes until two, but uh, all lessons will be recorded. So if for any reason, at some point you don't have a good internet connection, you know, I, I've had these experiences in teaching the courses this year in Toronto, you're not going to miss anything. At this point, I will just uh, I'll just want to tell you some basic things about the the structure of the lessons, the assessment, which I know is uh, always very important for you, particularly when you are in the process of making a decision about taking a course. And then I would be happy also to answer any questions that Jennifer will share that have to do with my part, the content. So quickly, the course is uh, divided. Every lesson actually is divided in uh, the six or seven or eight, depending on the day different parts, part one, part two. So so that it's not boring, I'm not gonna give you huge lectures about one topic, but rather we will have segments. We will have parts, some audiovisual material will be used. So the first will be, the first uh, part will be about Greek language. And it's not about learning the Greek language, even though I, oh, I want you to, to learn the Greek language if it's possible, but I will to introduce you to the basics and particularly to Greek phrases, and Greek words that are used in English and also Greek ideas that have influenced other languages and the world in many different aspects. We're going also to have a, a, a a section about famous Greeks, important Greeks, innovators, significant uh, personalities from the political scene or from the culture scene, from the arts, from businesses who have made significant contribution to the world. Then we will have a virtual tour or a guest lecture We'll have a short break. After that, we talk about Greek tradition, folklore, myths, and arts that are still evident in Greek society. Another section will be about uh, Greek product and, uh, and Greek cuisine. This is something that uh, I know you would enjoy a lot more if we, this was to be um, a face-to-face -face course, but we will have some experts also talking about uh, the Greek cuisine or the Mediterranean diet and all these nice things and the local products. Then we'll have a section about Greece today with current affairs, uh, with um, politics, but also with uh, social issues uh, and, and themes and uh, geography. And um, also we will be taking you to different places around Greece to see those places and explore them. And then always we will complete our lesson with group activity. So you can guys, you can meet each other and work together for 15 minutes or so. Preparing also group presentations. That's one small aspect of the assessment scheme. So I, I will uh, finish with this with the assessment. The major part of the assessment is a research paper, which counts for like uh, 40% of your total mark in the course. Now, the research paper will be negotiated. Every student will have a different research paper based on their own particular interest. So if, for instance, you love music, you're taking this course, but you want to do a research paper on modern Greece and music or modern Greece and architecture or modern Greece and politics, I will allow you to do that, right? And I will help work with you so that you can um, have a good topic which you will, can start writing even after we complete the course. And I will give you like uh, two or three weeks to complete the, the research paper after the course is done. So that's 40% of your mark. During the courses, we will have readings, of course, and the material that will be presented in the lectures. So to make sure that we study those, uh, study the material, and we uh, do the readings, we will have every two weeks one quiz. 
So in total, two quizzes at the, at the end of the second week, the first one, and at the end of the fourth week, the second one. It's multiple choice quizzes, but each weight, the weight of each quiz will be a 20%. So there we have 80% 80, 80 already. And the other 10% uh, is a group uh, presentation. I will get into details about that when we start the course. It's basically students will be preparing the class for something that we will see virtually the next uh, in the next few days and three or four people will be working together producing um, a powerpoint and then at the end also there will be a 10 percent on participation based on you know the overall how you overall did in the course if you were you know every day there positive good attitude <laughs> working and that's about it that's regarding the assessment there will be quite a few places that you will see and i want to add one positive thing about the virtual course is that when when we go to greece we can only visit different museums and, and see sites, important sites near Athens, basically. And also we do a couple of trips. The last uh, trip is like a week, almost five days at the Greek island. Now, we will not be able to go to a Greek island physically, but we will be able to see amazing, exciting, spectacular. It's not possible to, to do just in one month. The Meteora or Mount Olympus or Epidavros and the ancient theater, Delphi and the Oracle, tour of uh, the, the islands in the Aegean, Crete and other things that I would like to keep for, uh, <laughs> for later on when we actually are starting the program. There will be a few surprises, I guess. So that's about it. Uh, Jennifer, I'm good. I, uh, I think I gave you a good idea, but I'm here to answer any questions. Great. Thank you so much, Dennis. Let me just take a look and see. We have some questions that have come in. Will the virtual tours and activities be synchronous during class time, or are they expecting a mix of synchronous and asynchronous teaching? I guess you kind of sort of answered that with um, knowing that some students may be at different time zones or may have some internet issues. But I guess for the actual schedule of activities, are you expecting some asynchronous um, teaching so that students can take a look? Kind of before the class begins? Sure. I will try to have all material there available for students to see. And uh, also because this is uh, a course that it's, it's a new course, it is actually designed as we speak, different activities. We don't know, we cannot assume that we will have even virtual access to certain places. The people who they will be the guest speakers and people who will be presenting and those uh, virtual tools uh, will have a plan A, plan B. Like we, They will have material ready for you to see. There might you know, get access to a place so you can, we can travel with them at one place. If that's not a possibility because of COVID, they will show us pictures or a video or other material, right? So if that answers the question, then... Um, Great, thank you. There's one student asking about if you're going to have office hours during the course and how will those be structured in a virtual format? Office hours, I will always be available like on a daily basis, right after the, the class, I will be available for half an hour, let's say, but also every Friday, I will have a full three hours, like office hours. If Friday works when it's the only day that we, during the week that we will not have any classes on weekdays. If that works, that will be great, but uh, I will be flexible and we can even have appointments like and, and have like a, through Blackboard or Zoom, we can have those those meetings, right? One-to-one. -one. And then there's one student who's asking, the student is a business student, can can they still apply for this course? So I know the prerequisites for this class is a 1.0 political science credit or relevant academic preparation. But I believe in the past, we have admitted students who didn't necessarily have those prerequisites but have demonstrated reasons why they were interested in the course yeah i don't see why not if a student is interested in, in modern greece as i said they will be able to do also their major paper for this course on their field so you know she or he might want to do a paper on on business like i don't know on tourism or something like related to uh, modern greece but yes they're more than welcome to come to join us students from this uh, from this field one question here do you have a sample class syllabus for the course let's do the readings and assignments look like? So I know you went through some details already about what the um, assessments are going to look like. I believe we do have a class syllabus that's on the website and may need to be some updates just for the virtual course of it, but it will be posted on our website once it's ready. Yes, it, it will be updated because as we speak, I'm just waiting to hear from my co 
colleagues in Greece who are doing their own uh, research and preparing some of the lectures and, and uh, guests. Uh, guest lectures and future tools. So I think during reading week, I'll have that updated. So right after reading week or during reading week, you will see the updated version also posted. But yes, you will have also a very good idea about the readings and about all the content structure, everything. And you are always, always, you know, you can always email me if you need any more specifics. I think we'll pause there. I do see a couple of other questions that I think I'll leave to the end, just as we go through more of, of the session and the content and maybe able to answer those questions. But we'll definitely get back to that, the, the, the remaining questions at the end. Here's just a quick overview of the virtual field trips and activities that Themis had mentioned. So again, presentations are gonna have the Greece-based guest speakers, audiovisual material showcasing these sites. So there's a lot. I know Themis is putting together quite the list of activities for students, so it'd be very very exciting to see how that looks for the virtual course. Thank you, Themis. Thanks for giving us such a great overview of the course. At this time, I'd like to invite Abby, our past student participant. Abby is a fourth year student majoring in book and media studies with minors in English and creative expression and society. And she took this course in 2019, which was actually the first year we offered this particular course for the Greece program. Abby, we're happy to have you here with us to share more. When you're ready, the floor is yours. Great. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, I'm so happy to be here and talking about about this course because it was absolutely the highlight of my undergrad courses. I would highly recommend it to anyone interested. I'm not actually in political science. I'm as you can see, a book and media studies student. So for those of you wondering if this class can still apply to you, the answer is absolutely yes. While it does delve into really interesting political issues regarding Greece, it also goes into really interesting cultural issues and you're allowed to integrate that with your own interests. Semis mentioned the research paper that is really open to your interests. And for me, that was looking at Greek mythology through the lens of popular literature. So there's Greek cultural life has integrated our own society in so many different ways. If your worry is that this course might not be relevant to you, stop worrying about that because it's absolutely relevant. Um, one of my favorite things about this course was how diverse the content was from learning about the Mediterranean diet and how it's both healthy and nutritious and balanced in many different ways, why it's so famous, especially in Greece, and learning about Greek cooking, as well as interesting political issues such as the refugee crisis, which I've actually chosen to focus on in my postgraduate work. So so I was very inspired by this course to go into this topic that I hadn't been really exposed to before, but talking to guest speakers and hearing about specifically a refugee education program that we visited in Rhodes was a really inspiring experience for me. And I wouldn't be surprised if you get similar inspiration for your future. What else did we talk about? I love talking about the famous Greeks. As Femi mentioned earlier, we talked about amazing poets and writers and musicians, some of which I heard before, but many of which I had never heard of before. And it was excellent exposure to a whole new realm of culture that I had never experienced. So that was really rewarding. I also loved, of course, talking about Greek mythology as a literature student. Um, because it's just really influenced our culture in so many ways. We delved into Greek language and how it influenced our own language, which I had never even realized. So the course content is absolutely fascinating. It was one of those courses that I actually want to stay longer in. Um, like if you're the three hours long lecture might be a bit intimidating, but trust me, you'll want to be there for longer. It's absolutely fantastic and engrossing. And a big part of that is due to Semis. He's an, a fantastic professor and he really cares about every student. We all got really close with each other and with Semis during the course and that is because of this amazing environment that he was able to set up with all of us learning and really engaging in the content through the group work and all of our participation in the class. It really did feel like what a seminar is supposed to feel like where everyone is integrated into the course and you're having a really good time and learning a lot. So that was definitely a huge part and Semis also cares so much about Greece and Greek culture and Athens specifically that it really comes through. I'm sure many of you have experienced the difference that passion makes in a professor and it makes all the difference with this course too like it made me interested in every subject that we covered even if it wasn't something directly related to my background or interest before in addition to that as I mentioned the small course size is fantastic I'm still friends with a lot of the people in 
my course, and I hope you get to share that even over Zoom. I think the group projects will probably facilitate that. People interested in this course are, you know, interested in global affairs, and they might be interested in traveling with you in the future. So it's great connections to have. You'll learn a lot from not just semis, but your other students. So definitely feel free to ask me any other questions about my experience. As you can tell, I only have good things to say. So I'm very happy to keep talking about it anytime. Thanks so much, Abby. We do have a couple of questions that came in. I think that you'd be able to answer about the student experience. One here, can you share more about the workload and class assignments and how you managed it with the course only being four weeks long? Mm, that's a great question. Um, it was very doable for me. I think partly because it was such an interesting content. Of course, it definitely takes like a certain amount of keeping up on your readings. But if you really attend class and keep up with the readings, which are not like hard to keep up with at all, you'll be perfectly fine. I would say, as we mentioned earlier, that it would be hard to do this in addition to another course. So if you can possibly just be fully immersed in this course for those four weeks, you'll be really well off and it'll be really rewarding. And yeah, like I think the only time that it was a more intense course load was for the research project, but that was very doable because Semis gave us those extra weeks after the course was done. You really got to dive into your research and not feel rushed on that either. Even though four weeks might sound intimidating, it's absolutely doable and you'll be amazed at how much you'll learn in that time. Great, thank you. I got one more for you here. What was the most interesting thing you learned in the course that you still remember today? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. <laughs> I still regularly refer back to my notes from this course, just as good conversation topics and interesting points. But I think one thing that was really interesting to me was just, there's so many things I would like to say. I would, the language part was really interesting to me. That was actually a surprising part for me. We delved into some of the words that have integrated our vocabulary that we haven't even thought about as Greek words. So that included, you know, Greek roots, like we talked about the word plethora, for instance, and where that comes from in the Greek language and how that's been carried over. But then also related to that, we talked about how many phrases that we just naturally say are from Greek culture, especially mythology. So, you know, Pandora's box and all of that sort of thing, where it's just normally, like, we don't even think about these things as we say them. But um, so it just showed the level of pervasiveness of Greek culture in our normal life so that definitely stuck with me but yeah as I said all of the content has stuck with me as much as I could possibly keep in my brain <laughs> great thanks Abby Abby and both Abby and Themis will be staying with us till the end of the session to answer any more questions so if you do have questions for Abby and Themis feel free to type them into the Q&A and we'll get right to them so from now we'll just move on to the next part of the session you've at this point you've heard from myself Themis and Abby about the course and I hope you're now excited to learn more about how to apply Hi. For applications for our summer abroad virtual courses, they are now open and they close March 1st at 5 p.m. Toronto time. They're online applications, so you will need to create an account with our system to access the application. And then we assess every application we receive. So it's not a first come first serve basis. So you'll have until March 1st to submit. And we assess applications based on academic suitability. So looking at your academic transcripts and uh, really just getting an overall sense of your academic fit with the program. We also ask applicants to complete a personal statement. So this is where you answer some questions to share with us why you're interested in the particular program and course you're applying for. I always strongly advise applicants to take some time in really crafting your personal statement. In a lot of ways, this is weighed heavier than grades and GPA alone, uh, because we really want to learn more about why you're interested in the course you're applying for and if it would be a good fit for the program. Also to note, there's also a $200 application fee, which is paid uh, online by credit card. And this fee is to make sure that when you're applying, you're serious and committed in wanting to take the course. And if you're not admitted into the program, then you will receive a refund on the application fee. So there's really nothing to lose in wanting to apply if you are interested in the course. Also to note, if you are interested in applying for more than one program, you will need to pay the $200 application fee for each program that you apply for. So here's a, just a quick snapshot of our website, uh, summerabroad.utoronto.ca. And on the top of the rows here, you can see See, there's a there's a link here for applying the apply tab here so you can click that to read over the details of how to apply as well as the terms of participation and at the bottom of this page you'll find the link to our application system another way to get there is to just click on this top here log in to application the button on the top there will take you directly to our application system if it's your first time applying for summer abroad then you will need to make an account first before you have access to the application and then here is just a quick snapshot of the application for the Greece 
program. So you'll see there's three steps here. Step one, fill out application, which has a few components to it, including the personal statement section. And also the you'll have, also have a chance to review your application as you go through the process. Review it just before you click the submit button. The second step is to pay the application fee. You can see here, step two, this blue hyper is actually, this blue text here is actually a hyperlink. So if you click it, it'll take you to the payment page where um, you can pay the $200 application fee by credit card. After you make the payment, you will receive a confirmation email with um, a copy of the payment receipt for your record so that you know that the payment has successfully went through. And then the third step here is to submit your application. So once you review everything in the application part and then you pay the application fee, you click submit and you'll also get an email from us. Once you click the submit button, you'll get an email saying that we've received your application and you're good to go. So as you can see, it's not really a super complicated application process, but I do recommend you start early, take some time in completing it before the March 1st deadline. Also to note for the application, you can save your progress and come back to it at a later time. So you don't need to complete it all in one sitting. You can take your time completing each section, clicking save, and then come back to it, make some edits before you submit. And again, I would recommend taking time to answer the questions for the personal statement section, which you can do on the application form. You can save it and then go back and make edits to it until you're ready to submit. After the March 1st deadline, our office will spend a few weeks assessing all the applications we receive and all applicants will receive a notification about their application between late March to early April. And different programs have different timelines of assessment. If you're applying for more than one program, you may hear back from each one of them at a different time. So don't worry about that if you see that. The different programs have kind of different timelines of when we assess, so you'll be hearing back at different times. One thing to note here that's important is if you are offered a spot in the program, you'll have to decide if you're planning to participate or not within one week. So if you're accepted into the program, you'll have one week to confirm your participation by paying a $500 deposit. And this deposit confirms your spot in the program. And so it is non-refundable since it is an indication to us that you're committed to taking the course when you pay the $500 deposit. And also something to note, if you are accepted in the program, but you decide to decline the offer, you will not get the $200 application fee back. So after paying the deposit, the remaining fees of the program are due roughly four weeks after the deposit payment is due. The exact dates will vary based on programs. When you are accepted into the program, you'll receive all of the information on the important dates and payment deadlines to note. So here we have an overview of the cost specifically for the Greece program. And as you can see, it's broken down here based on domestic students and international students. So it includes the application fee, which is $200. This is paid at the time of the application. The course fee here is the tuition cost for the course, as well as the cost for the arranging virtual field trips and site arrangement. Uh, and this course fee also includes the $500 deposit that you pay one week after being accepted into the program. So these two here, application fee and course fee, they are paid directly to Summer Abroad with our online payment system by credit card. The last thing here is the U of T incidental fees. And this will be posted on your Acorn account when we enroll you into the course. And you would pay this fee just like how you would pay um, your tuition fees normally through Acorn. The amount we have listed here is just an estimate. This was um, based on last year's summer 2020 incidental fees. So it may be slightly different for summer 2021. You'll see it on your Acorn when we enroll you in the course. You'll notice as you read more about the different programs on our site that the costs vary depending on the program. And you can see the breakdown of costs for each of our programs on our website. If you're interested in summer abroad, our advice is to start budgeting for it now since we have the application fee and the deposit coming up within the next couple of months. And then the remaining fees will be due around April and May. Unfortunately for this year's program, we don't have any awards or bursaries available for the virtual courses this year, but we do recommend you check with your registrar's office and your financial aid office for any possible awards and bursaries that they may be offering for summer courses that you could apply for. For anyone who is on OSAP now, the summer abroad courses are U of T courses, and so they are eligible for OSAP. So you'll want to check with your financial aid office about applying for an extension on OSAP for the summer months. But one thing to note about OSAP is that OSAP funding typically doesn't get released to you until the start of the course, but our course fees are due well before then. This is something to keep in mind as you may need to finance and pay for the summer abroad fees before you would get your OSAP funding. So here's a quick overview, a timeline of where summer abroad application process and everything. So we're about here between here in our program information sessions and applications for our summer abroad courses this, this summer are due March 1st. You'll get your admission notification, notification about your applications between late March to early April. 
and then you'll have one week after getting your admission notification to pay the $500 deposit to confirm your spot in the course. And then April and May is when the remaining fees are due for this particular course. The course for Greece begins in May. So this concludes the formal presentation that we have today for our Greece program. This is just a quick overview of how you can get more information about Summer Abroad. You can visit us at summerabroad.utoronto.ca. We are also running a bunch of other information sessions for our programs this week. This week is our last week of running sessions. And also they're being recorded, so they will be posted on our website. So if you are interested in a program and you weren't able to attend the information session, there will be a video recording on our website. You can also follow us on social media at U of T Abroad. And also if you, as you're researching more about our courses and you have very specific questions about the programs, what you could do is book an appointment with a summer abroad advisor and they'll be happy to share more about the course and the program and answer any questions. So if you are interested in the Greece program, you can book an appointment with me Then we'll set up a virtual time to meet and chat and answer your questions. Again, to access the applications, you'll have to create a summer abroad account. Uh, and then just at the bottom here is our contact details. If you have any general questions, you can email us at summer.abroad at utoronto.ca or give us a call. Okay, so at this time, I think we'll check and see if there are any questions. I'll invite Themis and Abby back. Are there any specific questions directed to them? So feel free to type in your questions now in the Q&A function and we'll get right to it. Okay, there's one question here. Will this course be offered next year in person if COVID gets better? Is it normally offered every summer? We were hoping that we would be able to offer this course in person, but of course with the with the ongoing pandemic, we had to pivot it to a virtual course. Our hope would be in 2022 summer, if the pandemic is looking good and we're able to um, travel again and be able to send students abroad safely, then we would be looking to offer this course again. I guess as we wait, Themis, do you have any last thoughts that you'd like to share with everyone? Everything in terms of I'm open to any requests. I saw a couple of questions related to whether I will be able to do this, to take the course if I'm on if I'm on a co-op or something like that. Now I understand that you know students normally take course when you are in Toronto, for instance, you also work or you know you you do other things at the same time. I wouldn't call this course a light course, but I wouldn't also say that this is a course you know you have to study uh, 16 hours daily. The way it is structured. You have your lectures daily, and then you have three days from Thursday until Monday to do your readings and to do any assignments. I believe that I really thought clearly how course be uh, comfortable in terms of timing without pressuring you guys, the students. So as Abby said earlier, and thank you, Abby, for your kind words, that I, I do, I'm flexible with certain things and particularly with the paper and the submission, you know, just give you a little bit of an extension if I can. And I will work with you to make sure that you uh, you do well. I'll do my part. You have to do also your part. Great. Thanks so much, Demet. Abby, do you have any final thoughts you want to share with everyone? Yeah. You know, if you can possibly swing taking this course, absolutely do. It was seriously one of the best experiences I've had at U of T, not just course related. You'll learn a lot and you'll meet great people and it'll just expose you to a whole new world of content. I really hope you all apply. Enjoy it as much as I did. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you both to Themis and Abby for taking the time to come and share more about the course and the experiences and things like that. And thank you to Wendy in the back end for helping us answer questions. This concludes the, the presentation for our information session about the Greece program Summer Abroad. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. I'm happy to answer any questions about the Greece as you prepare your application. And thank you all. Thanks for joining us. Wish you all the best and enjoy the rest of your day.